with why it's important. Awesome. So here I have a very simple demo page created for myself, folks. Uh, and I will be walking you through that page uh, and different aspects of Notion. So why is Notion important is because before Notion, I think all of us and a lot of us still do that. We've been using Excel, we've been using Word, um, PPT and, you know, uh, Wix and all of that for websites and stuff. And there wasn't single documentation tool. I think before Notion was there, I would dread documentation as a process i'm like you know it's boring there's no fun to it when i make it it doesn't seem and you know look beautiful and pretty so that i'm not motivated really when notion really happened uh, i think what changed the first aspect and honestly um it, it's stupid i feel a little bit stupid saying that out loud i think but it added a lot of beauty to documentation right whatever little uh, icons and cover pages and different font styles i think that was the aspect of it in terms of aestheticism that was required for documentation. Now, why and who can use uh, Notion? So I have been um, also would request everyone to be on mute. Guys, by the way, please feel free to ask questions. You can raise your hand and Amanpreet, if you have been muted uh, by the team, you will be unmuted and you can ask me a question. But let's try to avoid, um, you know, other, sounds during the call. Um, now, coming back to who can knows Notion. So this is an extremely versatile product. I have been uh, a, no a growth manager uh, at a startup. I was using Notion extensively. Then I started working as a consultant. I was still using it, obviously, for different use cases, but again, extensively. And I uh, have been on my entrepreneurial journey for a couple of months now. So again, as a founder, as an aspiring founder, Again, there are a lot of other use cases that I have been using this for. Now, um, it could actually be used by anybody, uh, a college student who's trying to manage their timelines, keep their resume, you know, record their applications, could be used by anybody from the design or creative fields, you know, to record their work, to create their portfolios, um, can also be used by organizations as enterprise tools, right, um, where all of the uh, data or the documentation is being stored and you know all the team management project management is also happening via this hiring managers it can be an extremely uh, important tool you know putting together jds and all of that so the use cases and the people that can use notion as a tool are immense um, so this covers basically why it's important now some of the features which i really like about notion is it's it's a cloud platform uh, it's a cloud tool. The second thing is it's very easy to share individual aspects of your project, right? So this is what you see here on top left, top left of my screen are called workspaces. So I have different workspaces. The one that we're working on right now is Aditi Chopra's Notion. How do I create workspaces? So I can click here <laughs> and these three dots that you see. You can create or join a new workspace. Um, it's extremely simple. I can choose if I want it to be with my team or for myself. I chose it to be for myself here. Um, also, guys, if I'm running too fast, too slow, anything that's happening, please let me know. So it's taking me to my workspace because I already have a connected account here, right? Um, and this, again, this new workspace, workspace has been created on the same email ID that I was using. Now, if you can see another Aditi Chopra's notion as a new workspace has been created. If I go to the settings here, I can actually customize it uh, according to me. Like, do I want what uh, you know, zone do I want dark or light? What apps do I want it to be connected here? What is my account information going to be like? So this is uh, how you create a new workspace. Now, moving back to the workspace that we will be working on today. Um, these are a couple of things which are part of Notion's demo only. So I'm just quickly going to walk you through these before we move to the more important part, which is around automation, websites, portfolios, and all of that. So here. Okay, getting started. So when I say it is a documentation tool, it's a self-explanatory term that you can use this to document any and all types of um, literature that you want, right? Whether it be structured or... Sorry? 
Um, yeah, Amanpreet, if you can uh, maybe mute. Everybody. Yeah, I muted. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, like, like I was saying, right, you can use it to document different types of um, literature that you have, right? It could be project timelines. It could just be your personal goal list. Um, it could be structures of projects that you all are working on. It could be databases, tables, all of that. We will walk through by those features one by one. But this is what you have here. Here are the basics. So in Notion, the one thing is, it's a universal um, initiation tool. So basically with a slash, you can get all the options of what you want to do, all the available features from rich text to different type of, uh, you know, sub features. If you want to create a page, if you want to do a to-do list, all of that. So that's how you basically start with it. Say now, if I have to um, create a new page. So I added a new page here. And the first thing that I do is I will add a title. So maybe this is my growth teams project. I can add a simple icon here. Uh, it default adds an icon, or if I want to search for something, I can search and get my options. You can also add a cover to this page to beautify it further. Either add your own image or you can change uh, from the pre-approved set of images that are here. Okay, so this is the aesthetism part of Notion that I was mentioning, right? That you can very simply and very quickly create aesthetic pages. Now coming back to this. So say I want to create a page. What is the use case of a page inside the pages? So page is basically your empty drawing book. You can do a lot of features there. I want to create a gallery, all of that. Now I am taking this space as my project workspace. So, okay, growth. Now there may be different elements of growth, right? I might want to create a separate page for marketing. So I'm going to go and slash um, my command will be also my laptop might lag a little bit sometimes guys. So my command is page that I want to create a page here. And this has created a new page for me. Now I can name it marketing, add some title or icon to it. And when I go back to my growth page, I have a new linked page into it. Say I want to create some data repository, but I don't want to be creating a separate page for it. Then I can do a toggle list. So say I do community here. I can just write a title. And then I want to convert it. So these six dots that you see, these are the action dots. So any initial action that you want to take here, you can just click on them and then you can turn it into these common options. So I'm turning it into a toggle list. So I'm like, okay, I just need a little bit of content here. Maybe not as much that I create a separate page, page for it. And I want it to be on this page itself. So I created a toggle list and then I can, um, so this basically a hyphen and a dash is, hyphen and a space is your bullet. So then I can create whatever list I want, you know, ABC and XYZ, whatever pointers you want. And a toggle list has been created here. Now uh, let's look at some other features. So text is clear, simple text I want. I can just start typing. Page I told you, to-do list basically gives me these checkered um, check boxes that I want. I can create an entire list. Heading one, two, three. So the use case of this is especially when you have texts. So say I write something like growth one and I type something like growth 1A and I have growth two. Okay, so these are all my headings. Now, if I want to create, if I want to make them as headings, and I can go and turn it into a heading item. I selected heading two, maybe. So what the exact use case of heading that we had in Excel is the use case of heading here. Why, why can't I just add, maybe, you know, just increase the font number and bold in it? The use case is this helps you with automation of creating a table of contents. So now I gave this heading two. Since this is a sub part of it, I'm going to give it heading three. And for this one, again, I am going to do heading two, heading one, sorry, um, two, because we basically want growth one and create growth two to be aligned. So I did a heading two here. Now, one feature that I have is depending on these headings, I can create a table of content. 
So I clicked here and see. So whatever headings were there on this page, it has accounted it into a table of contents. Now, if I do something like growth 1B and make it heading three, that would be added to my table of content. So this is, now if I had content under this, you know, it could be anything, uh, matrix or um, structures, all of that. So these things won't come into my table of contents because they're not accounted as headings. So this is generally something that you would want at the top of your page if you know you have a lot of headings there, just so that the page, whatever content is there on that page, that can be um, summarized. Now going to some other features, let's look at the list. So this is what the heading is use case. Table, we will come back to bulleted and numbered list. I think uh, it's pretty easy to get. Toggle, you already know. Quote is, say, a lot of times, um, now when, when in consulting, what happens is I basically have created this standard page. And there are times when I want to be able to tell there are certain aspects in a very con, uh, conversational way. I want to be able to tell my clients that, you know, I can work on these hours bandwidth. This is the type of consulting that I can do. So quote is basically something when you are a person is saying something and then you want to highlight it as a conversational action. If I had a sample quote, maybe I want to quote JFK or Mahatma Gandhi or anybody else, then I would put it in a quote. This also adds uh, a separated beauty to your context. Like you have a lot of paragraphs in your content and then suddenly you have a quote. It's a different font um, uh, in a certain way, right? So say I wanted to write... Um, I or an I. Um, so this is basically a quote by Mahatma Gandhi. I for an I makes everybody blind. Cool. Oh, so I have this um, here and now I want to convert it to a quote. So I will again click on these six action bars and I will turn it into a quote. So this is how it will appear, right? Now, in, just imagine in my text, this vertical line actually adds a differentiation to it. So that's your code block. Now coming to uh, a divider, a divider is simply a line that you can get whenever you wanna create. These are simply aesthetic purposes, um, uh, features for aesthetic purposes. Link to a page, obviously, whenever you want to link a separate page. So we will do this um, and then a call out. So there are certain things, right, where you want to call something out or when you want to say. So now imagine I'm writing a paragraph. There's a structure out there and there's an extremely important note that I want to put out there. Something like, you know, important note or um, servers will be down. 1 a.m., something like that, right? It could be a tech document or anything. And I want to be able to mention, uh, highlight this. Then what I can convert and turn it into is a call out option. So this, it becomes an important option and you can just add whatever emoji you want. So since this was important, this is what. So this is how it is then presented in my content. Um, so these are basically some of the features that you have, the general features that are out there. The second part is mentioning a person. So whenever you want to mention a page or a person or anything, you can do an add the rate. If I do an add the rate on a team notion, this is a personal notion, so nobody can't really be tagged. But if I do team add the rate, say Amanpreet, then if an Amanpreet is part of that notion group, she will be mentioned there. So this is basically for ownership purposes. I am putting together, you know, task list, then different tasks are to be assigned to different people. So then I can tag them there so that they get the update that they have been added or a particular task. Um, date and reminder, you want to add on a text. So basically you can see a sample here, right? We'll do tomorrow. So if I do, if I write a task and I add today to it, it will ask me for a reminder and I can set a date when Notion will remind me that, okay, this task was due. Emoji is extremely easy. You click on it, you get this repository of emojis. Inline equation is when you want to enter an, uh, an equation in the text. So it's mainly for mathematical documents or if you're a student wanting to create a, you know, a nice assignment on a Notion page, you could use these features. 
coming to our database, uh, I'm skipping the database feature because we will be covering that one at length. You can add an image, you can add a web bookmark, video, audio code, you can embed um, PDF files. So what happens is, um, see, I wanna embed something, right? And when I would embed it, it would give me a snippet of that thing here, right? I mean, I can try uploading something. I hope I have some PDF. Um, okay, nice. Wow, I just don't have, okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> upload this PDF of lounges that I was looking at. So now when I'm uploading a PDF here, um, someone has a question? Okay, cool. So now when I uploaded a PDF here, you can see it has added like a cutout snippet of it. Just give it a second. Um, it's either my servers or the number of tabs that I have open generally on other windows as well. So you see this has opened the PDF here. Now it's extremely easy to just go through that PDF. You want that my entire page should be shown. So you can also increase it. So this is a beautiful use case that Notion offers you. No other document would let you embed P, uh, you know, uh, PDFs or other documents or even Google Maps like that. So one of the use cases when you're making your website is a lot of people want to give their exact location as maps, right? Now, this is a feature that you can um, use there. Um, quickly going through some of the other features that we have. I think uh, one thing that Notion has done beautifully here is it has made it extremely simple for you to self-learn also this thing. If you just got on it and if you were interested a little bit, like I never had to go to any tutorial videos. Um, you want to embed a tweet, you basically just have to copy paste the link of that tweet and it will embed it um, as a tweet option. You can do an abstract. And these are some of the other apps, basically abstract and vision framer. Uh, Miro is basically a whiteboard. So say you did something on your Miro whiteboard and you want to save it, save those whiteboard discussions to maybe your structure or plans or something like that. Um, you can um, add that or embed that Miro um, Miro board here, then sketches um, a design app before Figma. I think it was Sketch, now Figma has eaten um, the complete pie out of Sketches Plate. Um, and all of these, it's, it's a lot of integration. So whichever use case you might have, you can embed mm -hmm. these options. And then you have the advanced blocks, tables of con table of contents, block equation, template, synced, all of this we will cover, okay? This is finishes. And now the last part is, um, just some editing to beautify it. So say I've written Aditi Chopra here and now I wanna beautify it. So I could set it in a nice pink color. Um, if you select it, you can also bold it. You don't wanna go through the six block thing. You can choose it from here also, all of these features. And then when you click on these three dots here, you can actually, uh, select a background color or you know like i mentioned font color for it so said i set up a blue background to it okay so these are aesthetic features now um this covers most of our basic aspects of uh notion and these are some standard templates that you can also look at say quick note right um this is a simple page, everyday thing, kind of something. You want to make a daily task list or something. You want to be able to create um, certain documents, right? It could be a sim it could be something like a PRD product product manager. It could be a spine structure document for, for a growth manager. It could be a list of things that a social media manager has to do. All of that. Um, home is so you can also create these home pages, and then this is basically your linked other pages, right? And um, the thing is when you move these things here, right? If you had these options written um, one under the other, and if you move them to the side, you could create this bipartisan notion page, uh, you know, also. Um, this is basically whenever you will create a new workspace, notion will give you these demo options. Now this is a part of our databases and stuff, cool. So let's come to uh, database now. That is the most important aspect of Notion, honestly. And we will walk through each single database type one by one. So 
let's just create, I'm sorry, let me give it a better name, which is, um, well, why would it not type? I'm just gonna call it experiment. So, and cool, I think metal makes sense for an experiment zone. And I don't, I, the already there are pre filled some of the options. So, say I want, uh, okay, let's just choose a calendar here. So, now that I have chosen, so there's one more difference. So, this now when I chose the calendar here, it converted the entire page into a calendar page, right? Now, if I wanted to type something below it, it won't be possible because this is a broader, like a bigger, full calendar page but there's also an option to create inline so sometimes maybe in between my pages i want to create a calendar right maybe i'm sending an assignment and i want to be able to um, send a sample calendar out there so then let's create another page call it x y z i'm not going really very creative here with me um cool so then I just click here and with the slash, which is our initiation command on uh, Notion, I click the table. Now it has asked me, uh, so this table feature is very simple. You want to create, um, and this is not a database. A table is different from a database, right? A table is just structured data in rows and columns. This is a new feature on Notion. Now I want to create, say, an inline table. So I go here and what we saw initially, right, was this calendar, full calendar, full tables, table-like pages. Now this is an inline feature. If I wanna type something below it, I can actually type it here. And this is um, also scrollable. Like if I had more things here, like say, let me add, um, I keep using the word matrix. I have been very well conditioned by Bangalore's startup ecosystem folks <laughs> so cities and something like that so now you see it's scrollable as uh, as and when i have more uh, columns getting added to it it can be scrolled on the page so this is your table option see now i you saw me uh, you saw i started with a calendar uh, like a table feature right so say let's call it customers and um cool let me just remove this table from here i think this is a very simple feature useful when it has to be used not so much otherwise cool um now with this i am going to choose so the name feature the first column it automatically creates a pages for it so say the first customer is rohan gupta A very very common name guys and then i want to add and then when you see these options right you will get a, a property type so all of these headings that you see here in any table in any database is called a property so now i want to call my property uh, person here um, age group right i want to define a, and i want to do a multi-select to this so multi-select is basically that i will create an option and it will then create pre-fillable options for me. So they, I want to do 11 to 13. So I created this. Then I want to create something like a 14 to 18. Created this. I also want to do something like, you know, above 18. It could be an ed tech startup like Start Ladder. You know, we're trying to categorize their customers into a database. And I did this. So now for any options uh, in this, row i will get these three options which also you can edit in terms of color so i don't like gray eyes I, I want to do it a green right so i can do this i don't want two reds here so i can make a blue and for every single next entry that you do you have a multi-select option fillable here say let's want let's want to do matrix and we want to assign uh some like okay let's not do matrix let's do owners and i will assign person so everybody from the team with whom this page has been shared i can tag them since i told you this is a personal page only i am there so you can tag me now similarly um, all these property types you have 
So if you do text, you will only see a non-media text coming up. If you do number, you can only enter numbers. If you select, then you can only select one option, right? In the age group, you could select two options at once. That was a multi-select option. If you choose the date here, say I want to choose birthday and I have chosen the property type to be date. So then it will show me a calendar to fill the date up. A lot of times you want to have deadlines and stuff. So you can also add end time and you can also add reminders. The notion will remind you on your email and if you have collected calendars of a particular event. Um, some of the other property types that you have is files and media. So if you want files and medias to be connected and nobody can enter text or anything else, you can do check boxes, you can do emails, all of these things. The advanced ones we will cover in the linked database. Um, formula is pretty simple. If you add that, you will get those some additional, like some average multiplication, all of those formulas. And these are some of the accountability features, right? I want to know uh, if I am one of those bosses who really wants to see their employees or their teammates finishing things by EOD, then I can add this feature also. It can self account for when that document was finished or last edited, or you can enter um, those times, right? So you can reference it. And if you create a text column, then you enter it on your own. Guys, if at any point you have any questions, please feel free to uh, you know, ask them because I have done it for quite some time. So maybe I don't have basic questions as to why is what, but please feel free to do that, right? So then I do a status box here. I wanted to do something like a status check. Cool. So this is your table property. Now let me fill another name and let's do Akshay Sharma. Okay. Um, then again, I add a different age group to it. Now, owners, they've got to be same. Birthday, let's do a different date. Um, maybe 15 November. And status is complete. Whatever. It could be a project or anything. So now you see, I have, I started with an inline table view. I also want that sometimes, say, um, let me do onboarding. Yeah. And then I'm going to select a single select because, you know, you a user can be onboarded or cannot be onboarded. It's not like, you know, the onboarding is done and an onboarding is in process. This is not an option. So it's going to be uh, cool. So now I have the table view, but I also want to see that all those people who are there under onboarding process and in a different view. So we will first look at filters here. Filter like in your e-commerce apps or in your, um, you know, Excel and stuff. Basically, I have a condition and I want output based on all on those conditions. So I'm going to apply a filter here. I just want to see those people in my table who have been onboarded, say. So then I go here and I say where onboarding is onboarded. And you see that the filter option has come up here. So... And when you click on this table, you will see an activated blue filter, which means that there is some filter that has been applied. You can also do one thing, which is add a filter group. So I might have two or three conditions that I only want to see a user who has been onboarded and say um, where the age group is not 11 to 13, let's say. So we shouldn't get any option, right? And where age group is contains, let's say 14 to 13. So because we had nobody who was onboarded and was in this age group, we will not see any of these options. I am going to remove this here. So we got this. Now I'm like, okay, this is a nice view, but I also want to see it in another view, which is a board view. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this board view, right? And I'm going to create this. So now in my board view, what has happened that it has assumed um, generally, Notion has this priority cycle of its own where it assumes onboarded and all of that. And it has created this particular, um, you know, board view for me. So now I am like, okay. And you can also edit the names here, right? So I want to call it um, onboarding view or something like that. So I created that. 
and this I want to do an overall kind of something. I did that, right? And also one more thing is uh, I love this feature which is called Emojipedia. So it is just, just, just of uh, a lot of emojis. So sometimes I'm like, you know, I want to add emojis random places on titles and all of that, but Notion doesn't take those commands. So you can basically come here, you can copy paste an emoji. And, and this is not just for Notion. You can copy paste emojis from here for anywhere and you can use those. So now coming back to our table, I wanted to use an emoji here. So yeah, you know, you, up, along with your icon, if you want something in headings here, you know, all of these. So just to beautify stuff. So now I did an onboarding view. Now I'm like, okay, let me also add another view. So sometimes what happens and say, um, I am like, okay, I have an overall, but I want to see onboard it. So what I do is in my onboarding view, I'm going to add a filter here. And the filter basically, again, would be where onboarding is onboarded. So now I have a filter here. So I'm like, okay, let me get this to Cool. So I don't want to make edits to my overall table. And I'm like, I should be with, you know, a click of a button, be able to see the entire database, then I should also be able to see those who have been onboarded. And um, let's add another view here, which is say a list view, right? So I am creating this here. And now it has created list on the basis of the names. And now I'm like, okay, this is good, but I also want to, and I want this to be called like a daily updates or all customers database. I just want to see. So I have this. So now when I click on this drop down, it basically has my list of overall people. It also has a list of those who have been onboarded. And I want to see those, you know, um, customer names because I wanted to see in a very simple list like option. And like I mentioned, um, whenever you're adding the title name to any of these databases, it creates a page. Uh, of its own. Now, if you may use it, may you not use it, that's up to you, but it has been created. So Rohan Gupta, if I go see here, a page has been created and all of those parameter properties that I added have as, as been added as the individual properties here. Now I can add a lot of things to Rohan Gupta's page. So this feature um, is extremely important when I want to have different views of the same database with filters, right? I created a filter on onboarding. Maybe I also want to create a filter, excuse me, on birth dates, right? So then I can create another board, another table on, you know, where the birth date is greater than say some date. So that way you have all of these beautiful views created and with just one drop down menu, you can get all of these features. What I have, the two things that I have combined here is different types of views with filters. This is something that is extremely useful and is a core moat feature of Notion um, because it's aesthetic, it's simple to use. Excel also doesn't give you this feature, right? You can add a lot of filters there, but you still have to navigate to the parent filter button. Um, cool. Now walking you through all the different views. So table view, we've already seen. Board view is a Kanban board view. This is how it appears, right? Sometimes there are a lot of tasks and we want to have our tasks depending on to do's and like, you know, to be done, um, has been done, completed, backlogs, all of that. So then you can use a board. A timeline is basically this kind of a feature. So say, now let's not imagine these are usernames, but these could be social media projects, right? And I want to assign timelines to it. So now the date that was given there, it has taken up to be that date. I can create a new, um, let's take it to be social media poster, right? Today's what Vijay Divas. So I'm gonna do a Vijay Divas post and I have my timeline and I'm like, okay, I want this post to run from here to say six to 
I could be um, adding and I want this to be posted between these dates. Okay, that has already passed. So let me move it here. Now, um, so this timeline feature, it gets filled both ways. I can either create a post name here and add a date or I can add a particular, I can pick up a date and then add a post to it. So I'm like, okay, I need a new page. And between 20 to uh, 22nd, maybe I want to do an advanced Christmas post. I could. Um, now you can also, again, edit um, these options in terms of properties, pages, all of that. You might want to add different platforms to it that, you know, I want to do um, the Christmas pay post on Instagram. So let's let's do that. Um, I added a platform here. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to select again a multi-select option because I know that there are only going to be few number of platforms for me. So I added Insta. I can add Twitter, all of those, right? Yeah, Riti, we have a few questions in the chat. I think some really interesting questions have come across. Uh, so Chirag, do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question? Go ahead, Chirag. Guys, I'm so sorry. I haven't been reading the chat. Yeah, so I want to ask that what are the use cases of Notion for like a growth manager like you? How, how did it help you and your journey towards growth? Awesome. So let me give you a little insider look of you know my own workspace and I have multiple workspaces. So if you see this, right, um, as a growth manager, what happens a lot of times, I want to be able to create um, repositories of work. Um, and this is just, let's just remove this thing. I want to be able to put down my research, right? Say I'm researching on EdTech plus community. So what all ideas do I have to do different community topics, companies and reading all of that. I was going to come to this feature later, but I'm just going to do it right away. So what happens as a growth manager, I read a lot of things on a daily basis, right? I might be reading some interesting article and I'm like, oh, this article definitely has to go in this repository. So I have something called a Notion Web Clipper. I come here, I just select whatever tab is open and then I have linked my Notion here. I have selected that, okay, I want this page to be added there and it just adds. So as a growth manager, all of my reading, a lot of content I have to consume, right? From what's happening on social media, what are new things that are happening in marketing space, um, what's happening on our product site, I can just add it. And you see, this was the Notion integrations page. Now, this has been added here. So one use case that it suffices is maintaining my content and keeping it organized because I might want to come back to this later. Uh, then as a growth manager, again, I want to be able to write playbooks, create structures and all of that. So then uh, when I was, this is my private page, but say I'm part of Start Ladder and I want to create a growth curriculum. So there's a growth CBC also, which I'm, I'm sure uh, Yash is going to let you all know about and which is going to create a lot of which is going to have a lot of such workshops put together uh, in an exciting package but yeah see i wanted to help them create a growth charter for it then where do i create that structure right because as a growth person my biggest role in any company is going to be creating strategies putting together ideas and in strategies you have to add objective a timeline requirements description of that strategy, who are going to be the owners of that strategy, what are the assumptions that we're taking. So documenting that entire thing, which is called a PRD in the product manager's universe. So that again is helpful. Um, I have my daily task list here. All of my content comes here. Um, when I, like I mentioned, I consult. So all of my consulting assignments, what's the progress, where, how much um, work do I have to do for them is here. Um, lots of stuff. Basically, as a growth manager, because I have to continuously look at ideas, what's happening new in the spaces, store content, you know, I could be seeing something really nice, a really nice post on Instagram, and I want to save it to my growth repository, then I can do that. So that's why Notion becomes extremely important um, for me. I could do the same things, obviously, on Excel also and Docs also and stuff, but Imagine continuously having to move between docs and Excel sheets and stuff, right? It just adds me, gives me all of those documentation features at one place. Um, cool. 
So guys, yeah, this is uh, one of the use cases that I have. I would have shown you some other pages also, but uh, yeah, confidential content. In great, great, Aditi. I think this was really, really helpful for all of us here. Uh, any other questions you guys have for Aditi? Uh, because we have something very interesting coming up and we are launching today for all of you. Uh, super excited about that as well. Uh, any questions before that, uh, feel free to ask, feel free to put in chats. Uh, anything about you know, know, know about growth, community, product. Aditi is like the master of all. <clears throat> Any questions? Uh, there was one very interesting question which came up on the community, Aditi, uh, is, you know, what exactly is growth? Is it like a combination of marketing, combination of community? Like, how do you define growth? Awesome, cool. So guys, first of all, all of the words are fad words if you don't do stuff, right? I mean, product can be a fad, community can be a fad, growth can be a fad, anything and everything can be a fad. A CEO designation can be a fad if you don't work towards it. Growth is sort of an umbrella term and there's this beautiful analogy that comes from Silicon Valley. Obviously, like everything else in the startup world, growth also emerged as a field, as a specific space, you know, out of teams from Silicon Valley. So initially they were like, okay, we have teams, design and marketing and sales and all of that. And everybody's working in their own silos. But as a company, what is your objective really? That you want to continuously acquire users, engage them and convert them to paying users. Apart from that, whatever you do, if your users are not coming, is of no use, right? You could have good designs, but if your growth of the company is not happening, then it's of no use again. So then they were like, okay, let's put all of these people together and give them a common objective that whatever you do has to bring in growth. Like you have to design really good templates and posters and images that it brings in growth. Product team is you have to design strategies, put together strategies and initiatives that brings in growth. Content is you have to write snackable content that it brings in growth. So then growth was put together as an umbrella field under which all of these segments, of, of, uh, of course, apart well, from- Philippe Yogi. Sorry? And all came in but then people realized that the growth became extremely umbrella-ish right nobody from the team <laughs> went here so then the current version of growth really happened in uh, which in india if i'm not wrong cred was the first company that adopted this pod growth model so now how growth is defined is it's at the intersection of marketing product okay i'm not presenting anymore cool uh, so now growth is at the intersection of marketing, product, and community. And it could also be called ma uh, marketing, data, tech, and stuff like that, but it's basically product that you have there. So any and anything and everything which directly results into bringing in more users and engaging on your platform is growth for a startup. Um, at FanPage team, growth, when I started as the first employee, it was a lot of things, marketing, brands, partnerships. Um, at a company established like razor pay growth has a lot to do with sales also um, if you look at um, you know an early, like a growth stage company then growth there might just mean um, putting in funnels and paid acquisition and all of that so everybody has its own definition fundamentally it's about users growing the number of users absolutely i think that was a great way to define growth uh, so guys uh, super excited to launch our first Growth and Product Ops program. Product Ops program. Uh, Aditi has been uh, the designer for this, but we have a lot of great things happening. Uh, like I said, this is a very exclusive program, the first of its kind growth program. So we only have 20 folks we are going to be taking in this cohort who will be learning live from top people. There will be projects. Everything is going to be project-based. A lot of different tools like Notion, uh, Figma, Canva, Google Analytics. You will be like the master of all while you learn with us. There is going to be a placement and internship assistance. We have a dedicated career team who will be helping you up land these roles. And we also have an exclusive community of all the top growth managers and product managers coming up. Uh, and now announcing the most exciting part, the trainers of this session. So if you could go to the trainers. Yeah, we have like the founder of Book My Show coming in for the session with us uh, talking about growth. We have product managers from FAMPE, CRED, uh, Chief Product Officer of Brainac UK, a Senior Product Manager from PayPal UK, and a lot more great folks coming up and mentoring you. Uh, this will only have 20 people. We are not going to take any more uh, because we want to make sure that those 20 people are able to get through. So, Aman, please, if you could just share link uh, on the chat. Uh, 
those who want to be a part of this uh, as i said it's going to be an exclusive program 20 folks eight great mentors we will also be having few more unicorn startup founders coming in great senior product and growth leaders coming in for the program it's two months mentorship program for only and only yeah in placement attention yeah we also have assistance for full time roles as well uh, so it's going to be a dedicated program uh, as i said it's going to be filling up fast because we are only taking 20 because we want to make sure that all the 20 who come to the program with us are getting their outcomes are able to become a master of all of these and potentially become as good as growth managers like aditi in future so do check it out if you have any questions and if you have any uh, if you want emi options you can reach out to me on my personal number and we can take it out from discord there community yeah well. you can yeah or you can even check this out on discord community as well uh, all the folks there will be a dedicated career team to support you with your career outcomes there will be internship opportunities you will be learning eight plus tools i mean uh, amanti do you want to show what all they will be learning in the program so these are all the different tools you will be learning in two months so uh, super interesting right 12 to 15 different growth tech product tools all to be learned in 15 all to be learned in two months span and from the top folks who have been there done that and today are product and growth leaders so happy to answer any questions you have regarding this uh, program we are launching as i said only 20 people and i have already got one second yeah we have already got eight people who are registered so we have got 12 slots left right now if you are interested feel free to ask any questions you might have your own questions concerns feel free to reach out to me uh, before we get full uh, yesterday have we had a hackathon with iit delhi a growth hackathon aditi and i think this is a best opportunity for all these students to you know actually not just do hackathons but actually learn some real life skills from the experts and actually land opportunities in these companies no absolutely i think uh, if we if i uh, if we have any more time like 10 15 minutes after this i would love to walk you all through some of the automations that i did on notion via this and that will be just the i tip of the iceberg Uh, of what everybody can learn on this course from these tools and stuff i think there are lots of courses out there but the most important part is something that teaches you these tangible items right i mean um having interviewed for growth roles for over a year i realized that these tools really make a lot of difference in your profile and your work performance i think great yeah uh feel free to anybody has any questions okay i see a lot of people have already registered in great uh, if you have any questions drop me a text and we can take it from there uh, as i said we're only taking 20 people and 10 plus mentors so it's going to be highly personalized support uh, which everybody is going to get uh, we are going to make sure that all of you are able to achieve outcomes you will learn a lot of different tools potentially get chance to interview at top company for growth and product roles like i said we have founder of book my show ashish himrajani coming in so a lot of opportunities at book my show also might open up for you guys uh, ashish sir has told us that he definitely is looking forward to recruit a few people from the cohort and that's why we are only keeping it uh, to the 20 because as i said these 20 folks are going to be trained and coached by the best in the industry and going to get absorbed by these people also so any questions feel free to unmute uh, aditi who is one of our lead instructors she is also here if you have any questions about curriculum if you have any questions about registrations or anything else you want to know uh, happy to answer those questions we already have 20 plus companies who have partnered with us who are actively looking to hire over the next two weeks from our community and those people are also super excited to hire from this program as well so happy to answer your questions okay quick uh, okay yeah i am going to take over from yash here guys yeah. um and um, we would love i would love to walk you all over the next few things and the more important part of notions that was just a briefer but exciting few things that i'm going to show you here in case you have any questions yash amanpreet they're all going to be live on the chat at yeah. all points feel free to shoot your questions there and they will get answered ad hoc um now moving to databases guys i understand that the time was 6 to 7 at some places maybe 
but we're going to take another 15 20 minutes to walk over this and these are really important parts so i will encourage you to not miss it um okay so what is a database really and how is it different from a table so a database is a store of data and that could be in any format right what we have traditionally known because excel is a table format we've thought that oh when we talk about databases it has to be rows and columns that's not true database is a very simplistic term whenever you are storing a data is a database like i told you right about all of these um different formats of storing data from timelines to tables and i i see a lot of questions in the chat which i will be answering towards the end of this session uh, around you know who can share documents and all of that so all of these views that you see are database views um, from list to gallery to timeline gallery is basically all of your pages are beautifully put together in images so if you have certain things those elements can be shown here i think once you make a notion account of your own and try out these different views you will have a much better understanding of uh, what i'm trying to say here um so let's move to the linked database parts what is a linked database really right um and as per notion this is what a linked database is it's a two way excerpt of the one source database so um consider it like you your friend is in california you are in bangalore and and you basically both of you are referring to the same facebook feed some other friends facebook feed now that becomes a linked database in a very complicated term uh, but basically both of you sitting at different places from different devices are able to access that facebook feed right so that's a linked database kind of thing um cool now one thing that i'm going to show you here is this i just open these and cool so i have projects here and i'm going to open another notion page for my tasks um by the way i don't know if you all know about this use case or not but you can actually group your tabs into something right if i wanted to like group it create a new group so i basically create some groups of whatever projects i'm working on so that i'm not distracted by the other open tabs and we have it here i'm going to go to this notion workspace which is a sample workspace okay and open the tasks aspect of it uh and guys uh, it's very difficult to walk over all the impossible no, uh, automation so i'm going to show one type of automation for all different things and then i would leave you all to practice and come back to us with questions and probably come back and join the growth course which will cover all of those things so now again as a growth manager i have a lot of projects like i could have a growth project a marketing project community and stuff like that and i have different tasks for those right i i want to have an overall visibility of my task so i want to be like okay i go to notion and i can see okay i have these 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 tasks there um but why uh, but i don't want to at all points you know disturb one of these pages so the whole point here is that i want one page one repository to be there to give me an overall view that okay this is what's really happening in my team but i also want to have a micro view right as to what are these different tasks what projects are they from have they been done or not what's the completion date and all of that so what i have done here is i created two pages one was the project page the other was a task page both of them are simple inline table uh, both of them are actually full view tables that's why you can't type anything here that's my way to know if i uh, know if i've created a linked um, an inline table or a full table so i created both and now i'm like okay um there is this thing called relations so what i have done here is i have linked every task to a specific project so if you see here on my tasks page i had i wanted to set clever tap i wanted to post on vijay devas i wanted to activate a giveaway i wanted to put together a structure of an event and i want to do a token launch i don't know i think i'm just too motivated by crypto at this point so one of the tasks out of random is token launch um so yeah so i created these and then i had a projects page where i on um, like broadly listed okay these are my projects now what i'm going to do here is if you can see in the project part i basically created uh let me just show you how i did that so i again created a project column so what 
okay project one and here i'm going to add an advanced thing which is called a relation so i am trying to link one database which is the task database to another database which is the project database so a relation allows you to link pages from other databases so then i'm going to select so i'm like okay task one uh set clever set up clever tab is a growth project thing so all of my projects which were here have come up right so if you see this and okay i want to select the growth uh sorry i have to i will have to select tasks why is the options not showing? Cool. So then I want to create a relation. And before I do that, actually, I will have to create a back. So that was a backlink there. And I first want to add here. Um, so yeah, sorry, my bad. Uh, and this is this is stuff that keeps getting me also confused <laughs> sometimes. So First, when I'm trying to create a link, I will have to create a link here in the projects. And now you don't know which is which one really, but the whole point is before creating a backlink, I need to first create a forward link. So I want to create and want to link things here in this tab, in the projects tab. So I'm going to come here and then I have already created that backlink, right? So I set up Clever, Clever tab and this is selected. And this is posted. And now I can change the name again to tasks one. So you see, this is how I have created all of my tasks under different projects. Now, if I go back to the sorry, tasks page and I can now unlink another. So now all of my projects are showing up. So you have to do backlinking of it. And if you open this page, right, the growth page, you will see all of your tasks put up here because I already created that, but that's just something that's visible. Um, say, let's do a sample, a new sample thing, just to show you all from the basics. Let me create a new project, which is my project. And I am opening it here and I add a random icon to it. And you can see that in this entire database, we have created relations, right? From tasks and tasks one. Tasks is basically what I created as sample beforehand, uh, before the meeting. So all of the parameters that were there in this particular database show up as properties here. This is something that we already covered. And now, because this is a linked thing, I want to add some tasks um, here, in which are there in my tasks thing. So, okay. And I can add this task. And as soon as I do that, it has been added to my live project, if you can see. Now, if you go to tasks, you will see this has already come up. So post this post Vijay Devas was one task and which was assigned to this project. It was also assigned to marketing before, but this new column that I created. Now say I create a new task. So the way to work around these linked databases is I always add a task to the task list and then I link it to the project. I never make edits in this project part. I did make an edit to show you this live project thing, but this was basically that you do something when you're setting up this page. So now I can add um, tasks like uh, send invoice or whatever. Right now I added it here and whatever projects I had put in here, I added a live project. This is basically the same column guys that I'm doing right now. And you can see that it has been added. Similarly, live project, you can see a task comes up here. So this is basically linked that whatever new task I will add here will get linked to my project database and it will keep showing up there. So every day whatever is done i can mark statuses i can also put a filter that i don't want to see the tasks which where the done status is marked so i'm like done is this or i don't want to see this then i can change it to this 
So all of my projects where the task is not done shows up here. And every day when you gather for your team stand up or meetups, you just keep adding tasks here and linking them to projects. So then you can see uh, everything. Now I might also want to see project wise tasks, right? In a Kanban view, uh, board view. So then again, you can add a board here, create, and it does this for you. Now I want to group it by uh, not line item, but I want to group it by projects. So I just do this and it has been created. So, you know, I can see it in a Kanban board, like, okay, under growth, I had this, under community, I had this, under life project, I had this. So this is how I created um, a project table and a linked task board. So what feature we really used here was the relation uh, property that we used here. Every task, you can also see that it has been backlinked to a particular project. See? Cool. So this is one of the most important features. Now, one more thing is, um, see, I open up growth and I'm like, okay, sometimes I can see the tasks here, but okay. So now in this column, what I'm able to see about my tasks is just the tasks. I'm not able to see that, uh, you know, deadline for these tasks. I'm not able to see the individual status of those tasks. And I don't want to be opening up every task every time to see that. So I'm like, okay. I should be able to open a particular project, pay, uh, project page and see all of these tasks and their statuses there. So what I have done here is I have added a project template. So the same template that I was adding to any task page is something that I have created as a project template. So again, I go to my any project page and I'm like, okay, I want to... Let's do this again instead of me explaining why. Uh... Cool. So I'm like, uh, you have these options, right? On any of these link pages. So I'm like, I want to add a project tem template here. I clicked on that. And because it was all, sorry, it's already pre-selected in mind that, you know, uh, if you were doing it on a new page or without linked templates, it would ask you which template you want to select. And then it would open a drop down list of pages. Any of those pages can be converted as templates. Here, because I selected the task database as the template, it just put up uh, this template here. Now, see, like I create another page. ABC. Again, I go to project templates. And it has given me the same exact template which I had selected. If you were doing it for the first time, it would ask you which template do you want. This table is empty because I have no tasks, no entry in front of this table. So this is again another use, uh, use case for me as a growth person that I come, I have this page created, I just clicked on the project and I can see the status of all of my tasks and everything. So this just helps me have an overall visibility and see, okay, what do I need to prioritize right now? Like I have a deadline and stuff. Now comes another very important property, which is called roll up. So roll up is basically uh, giving you like a nice up roll up uh, summary of what's really happened in your task. Cool. So let's select this and let me go to roll up option. So these are some advanced features. Um, I selected roll up. Here. And I want to create an existing relation. So I'm like created between tasks and I want to just call it name and um, calculate. What I want to calculate, I want to calculate how many unique values are there, but these are tasks. I want to count how many tasks are there in my project. I could do that. I want to count unique values. Then say if I had two tasks with the similar page names, it would count unique values for me. What I want to do is, uh, I want to count percentage, empty, not empty, um, all of these features that you want, right? Now I could also have, so this was by name. I'm like, I want to roll up, roll up by percentage complete. So I went by estimation um, done status. That would give me like how many have been completed. And I'm like, okay, I want to see how many have been um, checked. 
So basically in my done status, how much of it is done? So it tells me that, okay, this is percentage complete. If I wanted to check for percentage uncom incomplete, then I'll check for percentage unchecked. So this told me that, okay, out of your growth project, whatever tasks you had, 33% of it is still incomplete. Now I'm like, okay, I want to see how long will the, it, uh, will the entire project be complete in, right? I have several tasks in my project, one, two, three, four, and they all have a complete uh, dif different deadline. Generally, this happens when you have one task on the tech side of things, one task on a product team, one on the social media team. And you basically want to figure out, okay, which is the latest date out of all the deliveries? By when can I expect my project to be completed? So then I'm like, okay, you can show unique values. You can count earliest date, latest date. So I do a latest date. So it shows me that in 12 days, your project should be complete, right? And now if you look at these tasks, uh, just a second. So every project date had a estimated completion date here, right? So it accounted for that date and it gave me those days here. So this is the biggest use case of a linked database that I don't have to navigate in a, you know, a pile of data to figure out these basic things, project management things. Uh, I am sure you all have a lot of questions on this part, but in favor of time, I'm going to cover a few other things and then come back to those questions. If there are urgent questions, then please unmute yourself and ask me those. Any questions? I think I should just quickly chat chat. Um, cool. I think this is uh, good here. Now coming to, okay, this is an extreme feature. Okay. So since we talked about automation, what is automation really? So automation, how I like to define is something that's just a repetitive task that's making my life easier, right? So one of the classic use case that I used to have is a lot of time different teams would just report that they have a problem, something is not working. And it's difficult, right, to pick up things from Slack, different channels, and uh, then just record it somewhere. So one automation using Zapier. Zapier is an automation and integration tool, which I would suggest all of you all to check and know about. This is basically what Zapier. And the automation that I'm showing you here is this. So a lot of times my team would basically have um, problems, right? Different channels that this is not happening. This is not happening. So now imagine this is a, whatever channel you want to consider. It could be a general problems channel, box channel. And somebody posted that Zoom call is a lot. And anybody could have posted this, right? And then I'm like, okay, as a growth manager, as someone who has to, you know, keep track of these problems that are happening on our end, uh, I have a debt. I get this from my user in the team and I'm like, okay, so how I've automated it for myself is whenever someone reports a problem, I react it with a certain emoji, say Slack emoji. As soon as I do that, it gets added to my list of bugs. You see, Zoom call is lacking a lot and it added with a status to do via Slack. Now imagine how easy that has made my life as a manager, as a product manager. A lot of people from team are just posting problems and whichever problem I think is viable for me to solve or for me to look at, I just go react it with a particular emoji and it just lets it down for me. So at night, I don't have to go through that entire Slack channel, but just come here and see what I have to do. So this is one interesting uh, and thousands of such emo automations can really be done using Slack, Notion, all the other you know SaaS apps uh, with Zapier. So I'm quickly going to show you how I did this. So let's go to, so this is basically whenever you create a such a link, it's called a zap. And let me show you how zaps. I hope this works out and I don't have to do a lot of logging in online, I'm super skeptic of having those on Zoom calls and recorded data, however much Zoom tries in its security. Um, cool, so this is, this, is a, uh, this is a zap, which is on right now. Let's go and let's view it. So in this whole thing, what I have done is I have, 
integrated. I have used Slack as a software. I have used Notion. You could have used anything that you wanted, honestly. Like you could have used um, uh, Google Drive and stuff like that. So first of all, that you have to do is you have to choose app and event. So I chose my app, linked my Slack with it. And the trigger event is a new reaction is added. So I also selected which reaction really is react, right? Now you can have different types of things. New message posted on a particular channel. Somebody mentioned me. And whenever I am mentioned, I want that to enter in the bug or somebody, um, anything, you know, all of these things that can happen as actions in Slack, they have it pre-recorded here. I was like, okay, if a new action is added, I want that to be the trigger. Then I continue. Then they asked me, okay, what channel, which account do you want to link? So I linked my own account. Then they're like, okay, now you've defined the trigger, but what exactly is that trigger? So I'm like, okay, the reaction that I chose is Slack. And I don't want to be using all of those channels there. So I just basically want to have one channel here. And I chose this channel that anybody posts in this channel. And they're like, okay, in a channel also, do you want every user to be putting those things there or only from certain users, right? Because it, it's possible that everybody starts reporting bugs, but you only want to focus on bugs maybe coming in from team leads. So then I chose a user also. And then is I will test the trigger um, here. On the other hand, it also wants me to link Notion. So how did I do that? And this is, this is an automated flow. You will never have to bother about, you know, knowing what step to do next. Zapier walks you through that entire process. Uh, Notion, Slack, all of these such new age apps have been built in a way that integration is very, um, you know, skin deep and bone deep to them. Again, it asks me to choose the app and the event. I'm like, okay, you choose the app as Notion and what is my trigger? Or what is my event that I want is create a database item. So I created that. Then they're like, okay, you choose an account. I choose my Notion account. They're like, set up an action. I'm like, okay, I'm setting up an action in this database. And I want that entire message test text to be put up there. It could be, you know, if there's a link, do you want the link to be there? Do you want the message name or channel name? I'm like, no, I want message to be there. And they're like, what do you want to define? So I had defined in my box channel several um, of these multi select options you remember from earlier. Um, and then I selected that, okay, I want to name this to do via Slack and I don't want any content to come with it and I close. And then it would give you an option to test. And this is now live, right? Anytime, every time I do X, Y, Z, somebody puts up a problem, my selected person, I react to with, um, why do I keep doing this? Yeah. Um, I also have certain reminders set up. So then I react to this with um, a Slack emoji. You could choose any emoji. You can even do custom emojis if you have, and then it would end up in my uh, page. Cool. So this is another automation that you could do. Um, websites and portfolios, I would love to walk you all through this, but I think this is, for another time, I think all oh, those who are going to join me for the course will be covering this there and separately, maybe a part two section if Yash organizes that. Um, but quickly, I think um, I'm just going to walk you through these two Notion makers. Fruition is my favorite <laughs> uh, Notion website maker. And the moment you go to Fruition, they have an entire process set up. It's free. It's open source. You can do your own domain names and create beautiful websites. I mean, my consulting website is made out of Notion. Whenever I have to send certain briefs to clients, right? Customized, I just do it on this side. When we were doing this massive event for FamJam at FamPay, the entire site was created on Notion and it handled the traffic of over 3 lakh people as well. So um, this is there. If you go through it, the demo is already here. The initial few steps are obviously about setting up your name and setting up, several official things and then you get into building the website part um so yeah this is their resume also similarly using all the beautification features and even using the templates that are out there so if you click here um no sorry if you click here you can find some beautiful templates that notion has already made for you um and if you're like okay i want to create my cube quick resume, put up my photo and all of that. You can just go use this template, edit information, and voila, in 10 minutes, you have your resume ready. Um, all of these resources, 
which we am talking about here, they you will get a list of all of these resources after this session and a lot more in the course that we do. And I really wanted to cover, and the last part is this: um, some some little things which have been very useful in me having to use Notion. So um, this is not really part of a growth manager's job, but this was something that I wanted to do voluntarily, right? I am from Jabalpur, which is my hometown. And when I was here, we realized when COVID second wave was there, there was nothing, no database of, you know, all of the services and out there. And I'm, I'm not being a techie, I didn't have anything. So I just used Notion and in half an hour, I was able to create this database of all the requirements that are out there. Um, and if you open these, say you open an oxygen cylinder, we had some data which we'd scraped, some data we filled on our own, but we would just enter like a news bulletin of latest availability and then we would have this database, right? With numbers, people, what's the usefulness and if there are any pointers around this thing. Um, we added a Notion form also, right? So that a uh, Google form, so that if people had immediate requirement, they could fill this form. And if you can see, I have embedded the form here. That's why you're able to see the content and it's not just the link. If somebody wanted to donate plasma, we had a form for that. We were storing some city, city stats for every single day. This was, I think, the last day that we were, was working on this after that second wave was solved or something. Then we linked our um, social media accounts for people to get updates daily and some important information. Um, so you could either embed your forms like that or you can also create some interesting forms in um this thing itself so i have used another like zapier there is another app called chili pepper chili pepper io which lets you create integrated notion forms so i just basically fill have this field here created a form on the chili pepper uh, backend and uh, i can also show you that quickly i think if we have some time let's see let's see let's see let's see oh my god chili pepper notion um yeah so this was the form and then current requirements. So our idea was that, you know, uh, we wanted to show all those who were filling the form, the requirements to happen upfront so that whosoever was visiting our data space or resource space, they could say, see, okay, what all requirement um, is here currently? And say, I wanted to fill my name, test name, contact number, I'm doing this. I, what do I want? I want Remdesivir. Uh, where do I want? It's a test hospital. You could enter the name also. What blood group do I want it for? I want it for B plus and anything else. And I submit it here. And this basically just shows up in my list. You could have this database under the form or you could choose to have this database on any other page. We wanted to show people the current requirements as soon as they have filled the form. Um, so that, you know, a lot of times when people really want to help when they have been helped. So this is a beautiful feature of notion um okay now coming back to some other samples that i had put together so this is another automation of how do you put together forms i wanted to once hire a content writer for myself so i put together the entire jd on a notion page so now you can see this is how i'm using the codes aspect because i want it to be conversational then the must-haves the deliverables perks assignment everything you know, everything I could just beautifully put on a page in 10 minutes, I had a nice JD created for uh, a role that I wanted to hire for. Um, similarly, if I have to, hold on. So forms, creating multi-purpose pages, form uh, integrations, web clipper, like I told you, right? This is my web clipper feature. So yeah, I think most of the things we have covered, um, I'm not sure I will be hosting. Cool. So I'm going to stop sharing and answer some of these questions. Cool. Amanpreet and Yash, do you think we have time to take some of these questions that are there in the chat or do we just answer them in an FAQ section? We can definitely. I think let's, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's take it in the FAQ section, guys. Uh, feel free to ask any questions regarding growth, regarding Zapier, Notion, and anything more. Yeah, uh, guys, I will be active on Startladder's Discord as well to answer your questions. So please yeah. feel free to join the server and then a lot of such questions can be answered there. Awesome. It was my privilege 
to be taking yeah. this thing. I think just refreshed some of my memories and just <laughs> warned over my obsession of Notion again. Thank you, Yash Aman Preet, for organizing it. Yeah, thank you, Aditi, for coming. Uh, have a great day and uh, looking forward to see you as a lead instructor at our growth cohort. A lot of them have already enrolled, so we are super excited to see what happens and what career outcomes these guys are able to achieve from the program. Absolutely. Trishla, Dushyant, all of you guys, feel free to join Discord from Scott Ladder or you can connect with me on LinkedIn and we can chat there also. But um, yeah, guys, bye. Have a good evening. Thank you so bye, much. Bye, Aditi. Have a good day. Thanks. Thanks. Happy to take any questions, guys, about the program, uh, like about registration or anything else. Uh, feel free to ask your questions or you can drop me a text. I'm putting my number in the chat. Uh, happy to answer your all questions. Happy to answer all your questions.